recently, Amazon Kindle Direct Publishing rolled out Kindle Vela to the readers. In July, earlier on in 2020, 21, they actually had rolled it out to writers. But there's a lot of ambiguity and some questions are left unanswered. So that's why I am just tickled to death to bring to you a very exclusive interview with the head of Kindle Vela over at Kindle Direct Publishing, Virginia Milner. Make sure you stay tuned. What's happening, folks? This is Dale here, and I'm just tickled to death. You took a little bit of time out your day to spend a little bit of time with me to talk about my favorite thing in self-publishing. And today is going to be a doozy. It's going to be a barn burner because we've got a lot of great information about Kendall Vela. And our special guest today is Virginia Milner. She is the product principal product manager over Kindle Direct Publishing, the leading Kindle Vela product business and marketing teams. Uh, and Virginia's previous projects at Amazon include Great on Kindle, covered that before and helping independent brands build their business selling on Amazon. Without any further ado, I'd like to welcome to the channel, Virginia Milner. Virginia, how you feeling? Hi, good. Thanks. How are you doing today? I'm just, I'm amped up. You and I have been chatting here for like the past 15 minutes and have a little bit of fun talking about spoiling small children that aren't ours and, uh, and whatnot. So uh, I want to, of course, first of all, address the live chat people. Folks, if you got questions about Kindle Vela, please drop them inside the comments. We're going to do our best to answer those. Uh, if it's anything related to KDP, unfortunately, we only have enough time for Bella today. So let's make sure that we stay dialed in. Also, replay folks, drop any kind of comments, questions, or concerns, and I will try to address those best as possible. Virginia, let's talk about you now because... You got into this position as principal product manager, and you also were head of Great on Kendall, the Great on Kendall program, which is pretty freaking awesome. What led you to getting this position at KDP? Yeah, and just one quick correction. I didn't lead the Great on Kindle project. I just worked on it. I don't want to take too much credit Damn. there. <laughs> yeah, just in case your coworkers are watching, they're like, yeah, Virginia, yeah. Hey. do tell about this Great on Kindle <laughs> thing. Totally. Um, but yeah, I, I had kind of an untraditional background um, to get me to where I am today. I was an English and history major in college, so lots of reading and writing. I've always loved books. Um, I grew up in San Francisco, and after going to college in New York, I wanted to move back to the Bay Area. Um, and kind of at that time, like it is now, most of the jobs were in technology. So I started working in public relations and communications for tech uh, startups. Um, it's super fun. I really loved working, you know, with the technology companies and kind of after a little while realized I wanted to be closer uh, to that, the innovation side of things and actually building things versus kind of just telling the story. Um, so I went back to school, got an MBA at Berkeley and then joined Amazon straight out of that uh, in 2014. Um, as you mentioned, I joined uh, working with brands, helping to build their business on Amazon. Um, but kind of always going back to my roots of loving books and, and reading and writing, um, both my parents are actually writers and growing up, spent a lot of time watching them, uh, spend the majority of their time trying to get their books published versus writing. Um, so KDP and direct publishing, independent publishing is always something that kind of spoke to me and I really saw the power of it um, and you know working every day on a product that lets authors immediately publish their their stories to kind of millions of Amazon customers I just think it's so powerful and inspiring and that's kind of how I ended up in KDP and then working on Kindle Vela. Nice uh, if you were to share with somebody that's brand new to the whole business of self-publishing what is Kindle Vela in your elevator pitch? Yeah, so Kindle Vela is a serialized mobile reading experience for on the reader side. So the idea is, you know, these are stories that are published one episode at a time for readers to read in small kind of increments, small settings. Um, and but the story goes on for a long period of time. So they're really following these stories as they're published, you know, over a period of weeks, months, even years. If you think kind of, you know, this is, these are stories that they could follow, you know, for years at a time, um, you know, checking in once or twice a week on kind of what their favorite characters are doing. And it really becomes part of their daily routine. Um, for authors, it's, um, 
anybody can write a Kindle Bella story. It's all through Kindle Direct Publishing, so independent authors. Um, and it's super easy to get started. I um, mean, just kind of set up your story and start writing your episodes and publishing them and getting them in the hands of readers right away. What was the inspiration behind Kindle Vela? Was this your brainchild or was this kind of like a collaborative effort amongst the team at Kindle Direct Publishing? Definitely a collaborative effort. We spend a lot of time, you know, listening to our customers who are both authors and readers. And what we were hearing from readers is there was really a desire to have content that could be read in kind of these shorter time frames. Um, you know, the in-between moments of, you know, you're waiting in line for your coffee or the bus or stuff like that, but the, to feel that longer connection of a, of a larger story. So not reading kind of isolated stories, but something that kind of they could connect to over a long period of time, connect with the characters, connect with the author. And so Kindle Vela is really a response to that, bringing those two pieces together. So, you know, the episodes you know, our maximum 5,000 words, so it can be read kind of in, you know, one sitting, um, but the stories, you know, are unlimited. They could go on forever. Nice. What type of author is suited for Kindle Vela? Really any anybody who has a story to tell that they think would fit in that format and work well for, for readers in that way. We've seen you know, best-selling authors give this a try. So Audrey Carlin is a, a New York Times best-selling author. She's writing The Marriage Auction and has had great success with Kindle Vela. Um, but we've also seen brand new authors um, like Bard Constantine um, or Callie Chase who are giving, you know, giving this a try for the, the first time. They don't have huge social followings, but they've been able to build and build an audience um, through Kindle Vela because their stories are just really well suited um, to this format. You know, one thing we've seen is is really their the frequency of the and regularity of the episodes being published is is really what kind of makes a difference. So these, you know, stories that um, you know, either an author wants to write as they go. Um, so we're seeing Audrey do that. And it's really fun to kind of watch her write as she goes and tries to keep up with the, the reader demand. Um, but I think, you know, Callie Chase kind of had her story bug already um, written, but she didn't really have the right format to publish it in. And just when Kindle Vela launched, she, she thought, oh, this is great. And so she has her episodes scheduled and they come out, you know, on a regular, I think it's two or three days a week and her readers are just anticipating when the next one's coming. So I think the common, the commonality is just being able to tell, tell a story kind of in um, pockets, you know, one episode at a time and being able to release kind of with a regular frequency. But other than that, you know, we've seen stories across all genres um, and, you know, read, uh, write, writers and authors kind of of all different experiences and, and uh, tenure. I know I'm going to put you in a, in a very awkward spot, but I'm sure you've read some Kindle Vela stories out there. Is there any favorites for you right now? I have to say I, I am a fan of the marriage auction. Yeah. <laughs> um, Audrey started publishing it uh, before we had even launched to readers. So Internally, we we started reading it, um, and we have our we have our own little uh, marriage auction book club on Slack. <laughs> Internally, on the Kindle Vela team, where we keep we chat about the latest episodes. Um, it's just a fun story. She she writes each episode. There's just kind of a few main characters. Each episode comes from the different point of view of one of the characters. Um, so you know, each character, each episode, you get to kind of check in with with a different character and it's just, it's just good fun. Um, and you can tell she's having a lot of fun writing it. Yeah. She uses her author notes to um, kind of share her excitement about how much fun she's having writing it and, you know, keeping, keeping her readers kind of giving them a, a tease of what's next, but also just keeping them like sharing that excitement that she's feeling. Good stuff. Now, speaking of excitement, every author, loves to be paid. Obviously, we don't like to be starving artists. So the big thing <laughs> is this. Can you share with us briefly the royalty structure for Kindle Vela? I know it's very unclear to a lot of people, and I tried to do my best to demystify the whole thing, but hopefully you can shed some light on it. That will help people out. Yeah, absolutely. Happy to. So, I mean, I think, you know, to your point, our intention with our royalty structure is really to 
create an opportunity where authors can earn meaningful royalties from publishing through Kindle Bella. So that's, that's absolutely our goal. Um, and the way that that works is it's kind of, there's two parts to it. One is so readers to read Kindle Bella content will buy tokens and they use the tokens to redeem episodes. Mm -hmm. So authors receive 50% of the dollar value of the tokens that readers are using to unlock their episodes. So that's kind of our, our royalty. And then the second part of it is we have a monthly bonus that we've been issuing um, that's really based on um, kind of the reader activity and engagement that we're seeing with the with the stories and also the publishing frequency. So um, mm -hmm. stories that are, you know, getting more episodes out more regularly um, will also uh, receive part of the bonus as well. You, you started to clear up some confusion that I'd already had. Uh, you and I were just discussing before we got on here, one of my favorite YouTubers, Michael Robertson Jr., has actually been chronicling a lot of his experience with Kendall Vela, and he's super confused about the bonuses. Maybe this will help clear it up for him. Uh, could you just elaborate maybe a little more on the Kendall Vela bonuses and how they work and when they're paid out? Yeah, so they, like I said, they're monthly. Um, we announced the, the total amounts um, uh, around the middle of the month. Um, so we just announced the bonus for the month of September and the total amount of, for that was $500,000. Woo! Um, <laughs> I like that. <laughs> Not for an individual author. <laughs> but it's still a big pool. Yeah, yeah. We're super excited about Kindle Bella and we want to make sure, like I said, that authors are earning a, you know, a meaningful um, revenue from publishing. Yeah. Um, and so right now the bonus is a major part of that. And we're really committed to making sure that, you know, authors are, are receiving royalties so that they can keep publishing, um, you know, especially as our as our reader base grows, you know, we're just getting started. So we want to we want to make sure that authors are um are engaged and can continue publishing stories for readers. That's so awesome. So if I could just continue to publish some stuff on Kindle Vela, there's, I'm probably going to increase the likelihood of seeing a bonus. Am I wrong in saying that? Uh, no, I think that's right. I think, you know, authors who are publishing regularly and where readers are, are reading their stories, um, mm -hmm. engaging with their stories, using some of the features we have, you know, like thumbs up, um, and, you know, using their faves on those stories that the um, kind of the more you're publishing and having custom uh, readers engage with your story as an author. Um, yeah, I think that's that's exactly right. Awesome. All right. So there's a little bit of context here for the audience as you're watching folks open up another tab. You're going to go over to amazon.com slash Kindle dash Vela to go onto the landing page and see what she's talking about when it comes to like the thumbs up type features. So this is going to lead me to perfectly into this next question is how can authors get better placement and promotion on the Kindle Vela page? Because obviously getting that prime real estate means that you increase your likelihood of success on the platform. Thoughts? Yeah, absolutely. So the one thing we've seen so far that um, readers are, are kind of really responding to, as, as I mentioned already, is, is this kind of frequency and regularity of publishing. So stories that are coming out with episodes kind of, you know, on a regular schedule, but a frequent schedule too. So once or twice a week, um, we're seeing, you know, readers really engage with those the most. And then the way that our Kindle Bella store works is it, it ends up kind of featuring those stories. Um, so the, the stories that readers are engaging with the most, you know, kind of the, the way that Amazon works in general, you know, products that people are enjoying are surfaced to other, other customers, um, is true for the Kindle Vela store as well. So, um, I think, you know, things that authors can do, um, to, you know, increase the promotion are, you know, continue or increase that publishing schedule. And the other thing that I'll do is, um, readers every week get what we call a fave. Um, and basically it's a vote to give to their, the story that they're enjoying the most. Huh. And in the Kendall Vela store, if you go over to the URL, you mentioned, you'll see, you know, we have, we have a lead, what we call a leaderboard and it's the kind of the top fave stories at that moment. Um, and so if you're, if you're publishing regularly, you're kind of keeping your story front of mind for readers when they get that fave each week. And mm -hmm. then if they're allotting their fave, they're kind of voting for your story. 
um, then you know you can end up on the fave leaderboard, which is a great way to you know get your story in front of more customers, especially new ones coming you know coming to Kindle Bella for the first time. That's really, really, really cool. So I've got a question. This kind of branches a little bit off our script here, but I'm curious. If I've got a rather sizable list or even a small email list of some sort, and I reach out to my readers to, hey, if you would like, could you leave a fave over here on my work? Is that okay or is that kind of not okay? We've seen authors kind of reaching out to their readers, you know, both through our author notes feature social media, kind of engaging with their fans directly. That's, I think that's one thing that's, that's unique about Kindle Bella and slightly different kind of from publishing yeah. an ebook is you can have that kind of direct conversation with your, with your readers, with your fans as you're publishing um, and, and use it to kind of promote the latest episode, you know, encourage thumbs up, encourage faves. Um, we've absolutely seen authors doing that successfully. Okay. Um, so, you know, the, at the end of each episode, you know, you have the opportunity as an author to leave a note and kind of break the fourth wall, speak directly to your readers. Um, we've definitely seen, um, authors encouraging, you know, if you enjoyed the episode, please leave it a thumbs up. If you're enjoying the story, you know, consider using your fave. And we've also seen them kind of doing the same thing on the so on their social media. So both creating a conversation around the story and kind of a, a, a fan community, but also encouraging that community to show, you know, their enthusiasm. And that's that's why we created the features like Thumbs Up and and Faves is to kind of create that connection and allow um, readers to share, you know, in kind of real time how they're enjoying stories and for authors to be able to kind of see that and react to it. You've mentioned this twice already, author notes. I honestly, that was one of the features I think I just glossed over because I kind of looked at it like, ah, that's kind of like x-ray, but it sounds like something that Kindle Vela uh, writers should be utilizing. Am I wrong in saying that? No, I would definitely recommend utilizing the author notes. We've seen that readers love them. Mm -hmm. um, so to kind of provide a little more detail. So, you know, as you are publishing your story, um, you would have, you know, each episode is set up and published individually at the end after you've kind of written your episode um, in the KDP portal, there's a there's a extra field where you can leave what we're calling an author's note. Yeah. Um, and it's really up to the author to, to use that how they see fit. Um, you know, we've seen authors, you know, as I mentioned, kind of Audrey Carlin uses it to share her enthusiasm um, and how much fun she's having kind of because she's writing as she goes. Um, and kind of te we've seen other uh, authors tease the next episode, um, share some background. So, um, you know, if the story is like a prequel to, you know, a, a book series that already exists or something like that, sharing some of kind of the, the context um, or just inspiration for character or location, things like that. Just a chance to kind of just share your thoughts as an author um, or to, you know, uh, encourage, you know, using thumbs up and faves for the for the story as well. Um, and we've just seen that readers love it. They think it's so fun to hear directly from the author um, and, you know, kind of break that that fourth wall um, and really, it, you know, encourages their engagement, it increases their feeling of connection, you know, not just to the characters in the story, but then all, also to the author um themselves especially since this is something that they're kind of starting to follow as their is their daily routine so they're kind of checking in with their characters but they also feel that connection with the author that's just something that kind of keeps them coming back to continue reading the story brilliant uh so with the author notes i i know right now there's a limitation of having 600 words to 5,000 words do the author notes contribute to that word count or is that completely separate and if so is there a limit on that uh, they, they don't contribute to the word count on the episode. Good. They are separate. They do have their own, um, word count limit. I believe off the top of my head, I want to say it's 200 words, but Plenty. in the, in the portal, as you start writing it there, it's very clear. It shows you kind of how many words you have left. Oh, excellent. So it's not like you, you're going to start typing in here and you get like really into this epic length novel of author notes to find out, oh no. So it's probably about 200, which is more than sufficient. It's not like people need to stuff even more things in there. I've got yeah. a few more pointed questions here with you and a couple yeah. of them from some of our viewers. Um, and by the way, uh, could you do me a favor, Virginia, uh, hold your hand up like this. 
What would you hand up like this? Curve your fingers on in like this. <laughs> hey, look, Virginia's telling everybody to hit the thumbs up. If you're enjoying today's content, make sure that you share it with somebody else too. Sorry, Virginia. I had to put words in no your mouth problem. on that one. <laughs> uh, longtime follower and subscriber of the channel, Melanie.City asked this, are there any plans to expand the nonfiction category as much as fiction? We've been super excited to see nonfiction contents, um, you know, already um, on Kindle Vela. Uh, Hugh Howie wrote um, his autobiography, um, Life and Death, which is which is available. And um, so I live I live in Seattle, and so longtime Seattle journalist Fred Moody um, published uh, Barfly, which is a memoir of uh, after he retired from his newspaper career and magazine publishing career. He uh, was a bartender in his um, in his daughter and son-in-laws or the other way around uh, bar. Um, and it includes kind of all the weird things that happened there, including Anthony Bourdain's visit to the bar on one of his trips to Seattle. So we've seen super, super interesting nonfiction that readers are really enjoying. And we definitely, um, you know, as more content like that comes to Kindle Vela, we'll expand kind of the reader experience accordingly to make sure that readers can find this content and engage with it. So we, we definitely um, want more nonfiction content and have been really um, excited to see the content that we've already had. Good stuff. Uh, all right. This one was kind of like, the most common question coming through from a lot of people, they want to know, are there any plans to expand to Kindle Vela beyond the U.S.? If so, do you have a roadmap timeline or specific regions that you're going to expand to? That's a great question. We're just getting started. We obviously just launched in July. Um, so I'll have to ask everybody to stay tuned, but we're, we're just getting started. We're super excited about Kindle Vela. Awesome. So it's it's a hurry up and wait situation since we're just getting into the U.S., yeah, yeah, awesome. that's fair. <laughs> Foolish author asked, if authors are going to earn less in Vela than KDP, then why should they publish in Vela at all? So Kindle Vela is a new way to tell a serialized story. Um, it's a unique format and our royalty structure is designed specifically for that format. So very different kind of than publishing an ebook and the royalties that you would, um, the royalty structure you would expect for, for ebook publishing. So, you know, as we talked about earlier, you know, we expect that the combination, both of kind of the 50% royalty rate and the bonus yeah. will be a compelling uh, way for authors to earn, you know, meaningful income from publishing on Kindle Vela as they, you know, publish successful stories that, that readers are interacting with. Um, I would encourage any reader who, or sorry, any author who thinks they have a story that would work well in this format to give it a try and see how it works and, you know, leverage those, um, those, you know, those features and tools to interact directly with the readers um, and see how it goes. Um, you know, it's, it's just, diff it's just different than publishing, you know, through KDP or publishing an ebook. Okay, good stuff. Um, all right, one last one. I know you've been scouring the internet and you're looking at all the blog posts and the videos and a lot of people's insights and such. And I'm sure you've stumbled on some stuff that are some common misconceptions and myths surrounding Kindle Vela. Could you share, uh, maybe share some insights that maybe some people have misunderstood about Kindle Vela? Yeah, that's a great question. I'm glad you asked. We definitely are listening very actively to the feedback and questions that we're getting from authors and readers. And I think, you know, there's a few items that I'd love to, to clarify that we've been hearing from authors. Um, one is that your story does not have to be published exclusively on Kindle Vela. So if it's been published somewhere else in a serial format and it's not available for free there, um, then it's it can be published on Kindle Vela too, uh, or vice versa. If it's available on Kindle Vela and you want to publish it in a serial format somewhere else, that's totally fine. Yeah. Um, so that's kind of the first thing. Um, the second thing I would say is uh, you can publish your Kindle Vela story as a book, as an ebook, uh, without removing it from the from Kindle Vela. So it can be available in in both formats to let readers choose what works best for them. Um, we do ask that if you do that, you the kind of last episode that you include in the book has been available for 30 days, just to give readers who are reading it on Kindle Vela a chance to kind of catch up. Yeah. 
Um, but there's no need to remove it um, mm. from, from Kindle Vella if you want to publish it as a book and and make it available in KDP Select for KU, for Kindle Unlimited readers as well. Oh, wow. Uh, so oh, that's... Pause there. Seems like you might have a follow-up question. <laughs> yeah. Oh, my gosh. Like, because originally that's what I thought was, you know, if you got, if it's all or nothing, like you go Kindle Vella or you go KDP Select, not both. But what you're saying is we can do the full serialized content so long as we wait till that last episode's up 30 days out, and then we can go to a program like KDP Select and keep Kindle Vela in place? Yep, absolutely. Wow, you just blew my mind. Honestly, there's <laughs> gonna be a lot of people, if you're not paying attention, please clip this portion of the video and share it with people because that right there is a big game changer. Virginia, you have been an absolute gem, but you know I left a little bit of wiggle room because I wanted to make sure our live audience gets an opportunity to ask you some questions. So um, folks, load us up. If you're watching this on the replay, drop any kind of questions or concerns that you have here. I can always compile that stuff together and I'll reach out to the Kendall Vela team and find out answers for you. All right, so there was one, actually numerous, that people are firing off right now. And thank you, by the way, folks, for watching. I see there's well over 30 of you watching. Please hit that thumbs up and share it with somebody because we're gonna be here for a little longer. All right, there was one. How can we drive traffic? Are there any plans to add Amazon ads is what Rusty Knox asked. Yeah, so Amazon ads aren't available for Kindle Vela right now. Um, to drive traffic, you know, things that we've seen authors do successfully is, you know, engaging their fans on social media um, via email if they have a list like that. Um, and then using the features that kind of I was talking about. So, you know, encouraging readers to use the thumbs up, the faves. Um, and you know, publishing publishing frequently to ensure that you kind of your your story will will um, you know be top of mind for the kind of the use of those faves, and then you know show up in the leaderboard. Nice, good tips. Um, all right, next one here. Uh, someone asked about international readers, and obviously, I think that kind of applies to the question we had asked before. But here's one that's a little bit more direct. Timothy Niederreiter says this. Any word on when Vela's coming to the Android app? Ooh, what about those Android users? Great question. Uh, uh, like a kind of similar answer, we're, we're just getting started. So I'll ask you all to stay tuned on that as well. Awesome. And you even assured me that any kind of updates that come through, you guys would directly contact me, right? Yeah, yeah. Awesome. Thank you and so much. And one thing, just a quick note on Android um, that I don't know that some people may have a misconception about is... So it's not, right now, Kindle Bell is not available in the Kindle for Android app, but it is um, available on the web and there's like a fully mobile optimized reading experience. So it's, it's so Android readers are, if you wanted to on your iOS phones as well, um, just read in a, in a mobile browser and the experience is basically the same. Oh. Um, so Android readers definitely have a, have a way to have the full kind of Kindle Vela mobile reading experience as well. So there's an alternative. It's just not the app that everybody's wanting to download and use. Very, yeah. very cool. Um, I wasn't aware of that. Okay, so let me kind of go through some of these questions. By the way, I want to say a big shout out to W.A. Blinko. Glad to see you here, buddy. Um, okay, Suedo Neem author and writer says this. How long will bonuses continue to happen? Ooh. <laughs> Great question. We plan for the bonuses to be ongoing. So like I said, um, it's we really view the, the compensation for um, Kindle Vela to be two parts, really the royal, the 50% royalty rate and and the bonuses. Um, one thing that we, we have kind of announced that we will be doing through at least the end of this year is also compensating for free tokens. Um, so uh, new customers to Kindle Vela get 200 free tokens to get started um, in the reading experience. And so we've been compensating those tokens um, just as part, like in addition, as part of the bonus payment. Um, and we have committed to doing that through the through the end of the year. But the bonuses themselves that we were talking about earlier, you know, that are based on publishing activity and customer engagement, those those are ongoing. Nice. As Kindle Vela grows, is this going to be something like the KDP Select Global Fund that this pool of money that's like, say, at a half million right now, will that start to grow? 
we're just we're just getting started and i think we're too soon to we're tell learning what yeah it's too soon to tell we're yeah. learning as we go you know i think the main thing is that we're just committed to making sure that authors are earning you know meaningful royalties from publishing mm -hmm. this content and we so you know we'll adapt kind of as we need to Nice. I, I'm geeked up about the half million, but that would be really neat if we start to see it grow like the KDB Select Global Fund's grown over the past, what, five years. Oh my gosh, like almost $40 million. Get out of here. Uh, you know, I like that. So, all right, here's another really good one. And it kind of goes back to the author notes, which has been the most fascinating part of this talk to me. Uh, will you be adding formatting to the author notes? Even just line breaks would make them so much easier to read. This is by CP Knight. That's super helpful feedback. I appreciate you sharing that. And I'll definitely take that back to the team and we'll we'll look at that. It's nice. Always great to get feedback like that. That's good. And in inst instances like this to where people can provide feedback, what's the best way for us to give you guys that feedback directly? Yeah, there's a few different uh, ways to do it. So you can always contact uh, the, the KDP uh, customer service team. Um, Additional ways is we have, you know, our social, our social handles. So on uh, Twitter, we're at Amazon KDP. And then we have a Facebook page where you can interact and kind of leave comments on our posts. Um, and we also have um, a, uh, so for KDP, we have a, a community forum um, in general, and we have a dedicated Kindle Vela topic as part of that. So if you go to KDP and then community, you can find the Kindle Vela uh, specific community. And we have a great group of people who are really active on there discussing kind of a lot of the same questions we've been talking about today. Um, and, you know, we have um, uh, a, a kind of a moderator, their name is KDP Sam, who's very active in the community there and it and kind of takes note of all feedback like that um, and can help answer questions and clarify uh, points too. Nice. So the learning doesn't have to stop here on the videos, folks. She gave you a lot of great resources, so make sure that you do plug into those things. Um, maybe when we disconnect, uh, remind me, I'll see about getting some of those links and let's put them inside the, the show notes inside the uh, video. Uh, okay. Next question here is from Jessica Aaron. How often is the featured list updated? Um, I would just say it's updated frequently. Mm -hmm. um, <laughs> so we're just looking for, you know, for stories that um, that we think readers will be interested in, um, you know, adding new stories um, and, you know, always kind of looking for that and updating it on a regular basis. Okay, excellent. Uh, a lot of these things, I'm sure there's some questions that seems like a repeat uh, of her answer. And she's being honest at this point. Uh, I told her, look, you got an out. If you feel uncomfortable in answering something, let me know. But there's some things, obviously, she's not going to be able to answer. So if I jump over your question, please forgive me. I want to kind of zero in on some of the questions that, you know, she could possibly be able to help out with. So uh, moving forward, Audrey Sapper says, can you confirm or deny always love these type of questions that the Vela experience as it has been rolled out is or is not a beta. How would you respond to author criticisms about discoverability, usability, and a lack of audience? Ooh. So I would say we're just getting started. This is a brand new product, both for authors and readers. And, you know, we were three months old. We're, uh, we're learning as we go. We are, you know, as I mentioned, listening really carefully, both to author feedback and reader feedback, um, watching how people are interacting, you know, with the experience and working to, you know, constantly working to make improvements on it. Um, so I think, you know, that was another um, item that I wanted to clarify kind of around like marketing and discoverability, you know, again, like we we're getting started and we're, you know, continually kind of ramping our efforts in that area. Yeah. Um, so I, I guess I would just say kind of like stay tuned and we're, we are listening to the feedback that is coming through and we're working and responding to it. Um, and, and, you know, it's, it's at Amazon. We like to say we have this phrase about it being day one, um, you know, and so every day is day one and you're always kind of working like it's the beginning and you never kind of want to get complacent. Um, and, you know, for Kindle Vela, I think that's just especially true. Like it's definitely day one for us. Yeah, that's awesome. And I'm really glad to see you guys being so attentive to a lot of the writers and of course, readers uh, expectations. Uh, by the way, Lucy Silag says, 
Love the marriage auction. Big smiley face there. See, I knew we'd be able to connect on some level. Uh, somebody said, look at all these people. We're already over 40 people. Thank you so much, folks, for tuning in. If you happen to be missing some of this, this will be on a replay. So you're going to want to make sure you go back because there's a lot of great information I've actually already learned. So speaking of, let's see here, Audrey. Man, Audrey's loading us up with questions today. Uh, is there any plan to tell authors how many faves, crowns, they get and how much those faves are worth. So the crowns are just to kind of clarify and make sure um, we're all on the same page. So the, the crowns are the icon for the for the faves. So they're not it's gotcha. not a separate thing. Um, and so right now um, we we don't kind of show show that. Um, and, you know, I think that's something that we're, you know, monitoring and figuring out, you know, what makes sense, what's going to help authors, what's going to help readers. Um, and, you know, if there's adjustments that we want to make there, um, you know, we're always kind of looking at that. Very, very cool. Next question. I like this one right here. You kind of briefly touched on it, but I feel almost like we should just kind of go back to this just ever so briefly. How often should one publish the series to get the most engagement? So I would say based on what we've seen so far, I would recommend, I mean, it's going to work differently, right? It's it's based on the author mm -hmm. and their their specific readers. Um, but I would say, like, I would recommend at least once a week um, is what we've seen to work kind of the best in terms of kind of keeping the story top of mind with readers and keeping readers engaged. Um, you know, we've also kind of heard, you know, it's, for for writers you've got to stay on top of it so you know if you're able to get two episodes out a week you know that's great too um but i would say at least at least one episode a week and that'll also help kind of with the faves as well awesome okay um unlimited story says there was mention of using social media but we were told not to link off the platform hmm I'm assuming that that's in reference to um, like from the from the author's note. Yeah. Um, and the reason for that is that uh, the, the purpose of the author note, like we were discussing earlier, is really to kind of engage the readers in the story mm -hmm. and at, like add another kind of hook for them to feel connected, you know, to the story, to the author, uh, to keep reading. Um, and so if, you know, you're in the middle of kind of, you know, binge reading a story and then there's a link that takes you somewhere else, like you, you may not come back and continue reading, um, reading that episode. It's supposed to really enhance kind of the reading experience and keep you, keep you reading that story. Um, I think I mentioned social media in the context of, you know, we, one thing that we've seen, you know, some authors have great success with is just creating kind of that conversation about the story another place for their fans just to connect um and and discuss kind of the latest episode or provide feedback um and so i would say that's kind of in, in addition um to the story in addition to the author notes um and and not kind of necessarily you know linking from one to the other cool Good, good insights here. And that's funny, you actually covered a question as well in the process there that somebody else asked. So please, folks, make sure you're taking some notes. We got probably time for a couple more questions. Load them up inside the chat if you want them. Now's the time to do it. Omana says, does Kendall Vela have a read to me option yet? If not, is there plans? That's a great question. Uh, I'll ask you to uh, stay, stay tuned on that. Nice, nice. That would be pretty awesome. All right, bear with me here for just a second. Ooh, okay. So Jessica Aaron comes back for a little bit more and she was kind of asking what I was thinking when I kind of hinted towards the KDP Select Global Fund and having the bonuses. Do you foresee that say an all-stars type program would be available for Vela sometime down the line or is the just the bonus pool enough? We haven't announced anything like that yet. Okay. But I'm, I know I'm starting to sound like a little bit of a broken record, but it's true. <laughs> We're just getting started. Um, and so, you know, I think, you know, there's possibility that if we we think that that makes sense for this program, it's something that we would we would look at. But we haven't announced any specific plans around that at this time. 
Cool. All right. Uh, someone sent a question to me, folks. I, I was keep it on Virginia because I'm on here long enough. You guys can always ask me questions later on. Uh, Love Townsend. This is a perfect one to finish on here, Virginia. You shared with us your favorite Vela series, but what is your favorite book? Oh, that's such a great question. It's a tough one, right? <laughs> it's, it's hard to choose. I know, Give me I at know. least three. Give me at least three. <laughs> at least three. Okay. Um, I think so. Okay. I'll kind of try and do kind of from different categories. So one, I think the first book that I read that like it made me fall in love with reading was Crime and Punishment. Okay. Um, read it in high school and it kind of made me realize like the, just the depth of, of storytelling that's possible and kind of how, how a story can unravel and pull you in and, um, and just kind of how the writing fits into that. Um, so that was kind of the, the first book that made me kind of like really appreciate literature and writing and reading. Um, I think the, the book or books that I've just enjoyed the most, are, you know, this is a little bit of a, a cliche, but Harry Potter is just like riotous to read. It's just fun. It's just escapism into a different world. And I, you know, I love that series and I have a small child and I can't wait for him to be old enough to read them. I, it'll be really fun. I'm looking to redoing that um, re reliving that with him. Um, and then let's see. Um, I'll, I'll do kind of my favorite book that I've read recently, which was uh, Little Fires Everywhere. Nice. Very good. See, <laughs> I gave you a little bit of wiggle room because it's hard to yeah, narrow it down to just question. one. Be like, you know, it's <laughs> it's like a Pringles. You can't just go in and have one chip for crying out loud. So, uh, Virginia, you have been a true pleasure. Uh, name some of the resources that people can reach out to to find out more about Kindle Vela. And by the way, you can point directly down below your head because I have kdp.amazon.com slash Kindle dash Vela already as a resource. Yeah, so that and uh, our uh KDP Twitter handle at amazon.kdp, our Facebook page, Kindle Direct Publishing, um, and then our Kindle Bella community on, on KDP community. Thank you so much, Virginia. And folks, while you're still here, I just want to kind of point out this very next video is where we do a deep dive on Kindle Vela. Is it worth it? Well, you're going to be able to get some of that information that we got here and be able to apply it on over here. I will see you in that very next video. Thank you so much for tuning in. Make sure you leave a like and a comment. Take care of yourselves.